Welcome back to Introduction to Python. This is tutorial number three. Last time we left off with this function. And I guess today I'm going to talk about the difference between the print versus the return command. And the easiest way to do that is to show you it with a problem. So what we want to write now is a function that uses this given function. So it uses a function that can take three numbers and add them all together. But instead I want to add four arguments. So if we're creating a new function, let's just call this new add function. You have your four arguments. And let's call our variable new total sum, which is equal to argument four plus now we want to call this function. So we call it by simply writing the name of the function and putting in the three variables you want to use. Now, no, you can kind you can interchange these. So let's say I wanted to do an arg one plus arg two, arg three, and arg four. This would also work. And let's print, sorry, let's print new total sum, and let's return it. So what this new add function does is it gets its four variables, which are user inputted. It adds the first one, but while adding it to the next part, what it does is it gives the three variables to this function, which adds them, and it replaces this with total sum, and then it just adds the two variables. So, the easiest way to explain the difference between the print and return command is with this. So if we were to print it, what it does is it just prints it to this little box right here, but it doesn't return anything. So this would effectively become null or void. It's just, it's useless. You can't add it to a number and it would return an error. But if we use, oh, sorry, I'll just do it this way. If we use return instead, what it does is it replaces this with total sum. And so that's the easiest way to use the return command if you're going to call a function. And for this function, you could do either because when it returns it as the topmost variable, as the topmost function, sorry, it will just print it. Similar to a print function, it will just print it as an output. So that's print versus the return function. <coughs> Next I'll talk about converting values to different variable types. So we had our floating point numbers, we had our integers, and we had our strings. And so there's three main functions. One is float, the other is int, oh sorry, it's lowercase, and the other is string. And what these functions do is, if you put a variable in here, so I'll just write here, it will try and decide which of these other types of variable it is, and it'll convert it into whatever this is. So if you were to write float here, that would give you an error, because, well, you can't convert the word here. But if you were to write float 25, or float 25.2, this would return 25 as a float point number. So it would return 25.0, and this would return 25.2. Similarly with integer, if you were to write int here, you would get an error. If you were to write int 25, you would get 25. If you write int 25.2, you would get an error. And this isn't just because it's a string, it's because this is a decimal, and you can't convert a floating point number into an integer. Lastly, there's string. So let's say you wanted to convert 25.2 into a string from, an, from a floating point number, it would return 25.2. String of 25 would also return 25. And so you basically understand that what these functions do is it'll try and figure out what variable it's given, and figure out a way to convert it into what it wants to be, which is in this case a float, an int, or a string. And it will output that. So that's that. Uh, now let's move on to if statements. And again, the easiest way to explain it is with a problem. And this problem is if the user inputs a number between 250 and 750, I want it to print medium. If it's below 250, print small, and if it's above 750, print large. And again, the easiest way to do this is to kind of put a condition on the variable. And the way to do that is with if statements. 
So let's call this if function just as a name and we'll make our variable x or if you want we could call it number just to represent that we're being given a number and we'll say oh, sorry this should be lowercase and we'll say if we're given a num less than 750 now what that does is it effectively reduces what we're given to just these two so if num is less than 750 then it could either be small or medium and so now we can say if num is less than 250 then we know it's small right because if it's less than 750 and it's less than 250 but if it's not less than 250 but it is less than 750 we can say print medium and so you'll notice that in this case I use the else statement and what that does is it says okay this if statement says if num is less than 250 if it's not less than 250 then I want to do this but you'll note that all of this is nested inside this if statement so this will only occur if num is less than 750 and if num is not less than 250 and after that now we just need to have the final if statement which is with respect to this sorry the final else statement which is respect to this if statement and we'll say else print big or large sorry and so now you'll notice in this program we have if num is less than 750 we know it's either small or medium so if it's less than 250 while being less than 750 it's small but if it's not less than 250 while being less than 750 it's medium but if it's greater than 750 which is here then it's large another easier way to write this is with the else if statement and I'll show you that right now using if function 2 now what we could do is well this effectively works in any any way because you could you're just limiting each individual if statement so let's say if num is greater than 250 and or let's just put these in brackets if num is greater than 250 and num is less than 750 ah my typing is quite off and num is less than 750 then print medium because we know it's medium if it's greater than 250 and less than 750 else if and else if is written with elif so if num is less than 250 then print small else now we could write else if I'll actually show you if num is greater than 750 then print large now this is effectively the exact same function as this but we could make this slightly more efficient by replacing this last statement with an else and the reason for that is because if it's not less than 250 and it's not in between 250 and 750 it has to be greater than 750 and so this could be this uh, this will happen if it if it doesn't follow these two cases and so that's the end of if statements on the next video i guess i'll get into recursion and user input but a few things i want you to keep in mind one being that in python indentation matters so this if statement if it's right in this function it should be one indent to the right anything that operates within this if statement should be one to the right else ifs and else should be in line with their respected if statements and also don't forget the colon because a lot of people do forget that i guess that's it for this episode if you guys have any questions feel free to message me and i'll get back to you as soon as possible